Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm going to be finishing up my Tattered Fairies collection with my Finale doll. This is going to be a Corpse Bride version of, or a Tattered Fairy version of Corpse Bride. So I'm using a Skeleta body and a Ghoulia to create this doll. I'm using mainly the Ghoulia body, but the head, arm, and leg of Skeleta. I'm using some pliers to pull out the arm just to make sure that I don't break it. And then when I add the arm back, you can you can see here that it's just a little bit too big to fit in the Goya arm. So what I'm going to do is trim it down with some with an X-Acto knife. And I'm trying to trim it down to be the same shape of the peg of the Goya arm so it would fit in there and stay in there nicely. But what I end up needing to do is make some further adjustments you'll see here in a minute. So I'm trimming the top to a sort of a point and to see if that works, but it needs quite a bit more work to trim it down. So I did that off camera and you can see I trimmed it down a lot smaller and left a little bit of a knob at the end. Just trying to sort of mimic the look of that Goya arm. So at this point it's able to fit in quite nicely, but it does do a little bit of a pop out where you can see the peg. So to adjust that, what I'm going to do is take a uh, I, instead of getting out my glue gun, I just get out a piece of a glue stick that I use to melt with a lighter. I'm just doing a, going to be doing a little glob, so I don't want to bring out my whole glue gun to do that. So this is my glue stick, and then I take a lighter to melt that down. And then I'll take the peg of the Skeleta arm and just dab that on there to make just a little bit of a ball and let that dry. Once that's dried on there, I can pop it back in and it stays much better. It was fine the way it is, but I wanted it to be fit a little bit more snug. So on to the leg. So there really is no reason or no way to remove the calf of the doll without breaking, unless you're using like a create a monster or I have seen some other dolls in the past, um, some releases may have been able to remove the leg. But this particular one that I'm using, I can't remove it without really just breaking it. So I'm using a pair of pliers, <clears throat> excuse me, to try to pull that out. And I'm trying to minimize the damage, but ultimately you're going to damage it. Uh, and I've done this with every corpse bride that I've tried to make, that I try to minimize the damage and there's no other way but to really break that leg. So what I end up doing is pulling it out the best that I can, taking a uh, an X-Acto knife and cutting the plastic to take the leg off. And the important thing is though is that I need still need to remove that peg that is up inside the leg. So once I've removed the bottom calf, then I have to sort of I have to use an X-Acto knife to cut up the seams. So I'll show you that here in a moment. So again, you can see I'm trying to minimize the damage, but as I'm trying to break that away, the knee joint is really getting quite bent up. So I take that X-Acto knife and cut it away. 
and pull off the leg. I'm sure there's a much cleaner way to do this, so maybe if I make a couple more of Corpse Bride dolls, then it'll get a little bit better. <laughs> so I take a lighter to heat up the plastic so I can make a cleaner cut down the seam of the leg. And as you can see here, I've cut up the leg as much as I could, and then that peg comes out. Now the thigh is quite damaged, so what I do is take a lighter to heat it up, heat up the plastic again to make it more moldable, and I close it the best that I can using an X-Acto knife to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So I'm heating it up. That'll make the plastic softer and moldable. And then I'll push it down back with that X-Acto knife just to try to close it as much as I can. It, it cools pretty quickly, so I have to do this several times. Once I get it as closed as I possibly can, there was a point that it just wasn't going to get any better. That's when I use my epoxy sculpt. I'm using some thimbles, sort of cover finger covers, to hold it together a little bit so I don't burn my fingers. And then I'm taking out my epoxy sculpt. And I'll take an equal pinch of each. Rolling them up a little bit just to make sure I have the same amount. Once I feel I have the same amount of each, then I'll mash them together and mix them. This color turned out to be pretty perfect for the Goya skin color, so I didn't have to do too much work when I did the body blushing because once it was dried, it looked just like her skin. So I just took a little piece and put it on the knee and I'm just smoothing it out, adding a tiny bit of water for helping with the smoothing. Looks like I added a little bit too much so I can scrape away a little bit of that. I want to add as little as possible just to make the work easier for myself. Get it as smooth as possible, but I will do some sanding later once it's dry. I want to make sure that I don't get that into the leg joint because if I do, then the leg won't be able to bend. So just keeping that on top of the leg. Not too worried about like thumbprints, fingerprints, because I am going to sand that. But otherwise, I want to make it quite smooth. Then for the back, you can see there's more damage there than in the front, really. So I'm just adding a little bit more and rolling that into a strip and smoothing that out. Adding a tiny bit of water there as well. That helps it smooth out a little bit better. 
I left this dry overnight, but I believe it just takes a few hours to dry. Just make sure if you are doing this to read the label. And again, making sure that that doesn't go up into the joint so the leg can still bend. Okay, on to the hair. So I'm cutting away the hair as short as possible. And then I take a screwdriver to scrape around the inside. This really helps a lot with removing the hair. So then once I do that, all I have to do is pull it out with a hemostat. Then I'm taking a cotton pad and some 100% acetone to remove the factory paint. And after I do that, then I wash it with soap and water make sure that the acetone doesn't continue to eat away at the vinyl. Then I'm taking some blue craft paint and just doing a layer of paint around the scalp. This helps if there's, um, if the rooting isn't as thick as you'd like it, then you can't see through to the scalp as easily. I like to root my dolls quite thick, but this is always some extra protection. I'm kind of making a mistake here. I went past the first line or first row of holes. Uh, you don't want to do that because then you could see that line, so I, I just took some acetone to cut it back a little bit. I'm using this beautiful uh, three-toned blue wool yarn for the hair and I'm gonna leave it in that kind of texture because that's kind of like how Corpse Bride has her hair and here I'm sanding away the knee a little bit I just sanded away that sculpting that sculpting that I did around the knee so on to the face up I want to give her some nice big eyes so I want it to kind of mimic the actual Corpse Bride but give it my own twist so I still want the eyes to be big and round, similar to the character. Oh, of course, prior to starting, I gave her four coats of Mr. Super Clear. I was a little concerned while I was working on her that the difference in the Skeleta uh, head and the Gulia body would look a little odd, but with the body blushing that I did and the face coloring, it, they went together quite well. In the previous Corpse Brides that I've made, I've used one where I used a white body and a Skeleta head, and then another I did with a uh, Guya head and body. So this is my first time using the Guya body with the Skeleta head. So it did work. I'm doing several layers here. I start blending in the blue and I'm mainly wanting to give some depth to the eyelids and shading around the like hairline. And you may be able to tell that you can continue to add shading, but at some point it just really isn't doing anything but just blending what you have in there. So you have to spray with Mr. Super Clear in between to be able to continue to build those layers of color. So here this is after giving probably a couple more coats of Super Clear and you can see the color starts to build up a little bit better.
doing some shading around the nose and I've already laid in the waterline which I normally wouldn't do on a corpse bride doll but like I said I'm giving this a little bit more of my style as a twist and I spend quite a bit of time shading in the face just because like I said there's just so many layers that I needed to do to build up that depth so some people have asked which pencil sharpener I use and I use a bunch of different kinds if one isn't working for me I kind of try another uh, that one was just a regular like KUM regular plain just a plain old pencil sharpener that uh, I think it's by KUM I'm not sure how to say that so I just spell it <laughs> but I I usually like the sharpeners that have the casing so you don't have to throw away like you can empty the casing with the sharpening the pencil sharpener shreds but um, these tend to work better because you can really see what you're doing and not waste as much pencil but again it doesn't have that casing so I just use a little Tupperware container from the dollar store to keep those in and then I empty that so it's kind of similar to those other kind of pencil sharpeners so those just tend to work a little bit better for me sometimes but if I want a quick pencil sharpen if I want to sharpen quickly and have the casing my favorite pencil sharpener is always the Prismacolor Scholar it just works best for me So onto the lips, I'm using a custom mix of some pan pastels and blending them in with some white at the bottom, on the bottom lip to give some highlight. And I add a, have to add several layers here as well. I'm just kind of trying to mimic the, the character's coloring. Adding in some black to the corners of the mouth and I want her to look like she's opening her mouth a little bit so I add a little black to the center of the mouth just a little bit more of, of a thicker line there and taper it out towards the ends I'm adding several layers of white to the eyes even though it is a white doll it just always matters how many layers of white you just want to they can't be too white <laughs> At this point I've probably gone in and given a couple more uh, layers of Mr. Super Clear so I can build up that contouring and shading in the inner eyelid. And I'm adding a tiny bit of like a tannish brown color into her coloring just so she doesn't look so stark white and blue and it looks more aged. So just continuing with the shading here. So I just want to mention that dolls in my Tattered Fairy collection were pretty high-end because of the many hours I spent like hand dyeing fabrics, constructing the costumes, I had to source particular types of fabrics and there were a lots, lots of extra detail and there was a lot of extra fabrics and um, elements used to create the dresses. So I, I really like to keep growing in my craft and adding more detail and refining the product. So that always means, unfortunately, a higher price tag. Um, however, I do have some dolls that I'll be adding to the shop at a lower price. Uh, price point so those will be available for you too uh, for those who are interested and again the li link to my Etsy shop is in the description box below at the time I'm recording this video this particular doll is still available and will be in my Etsy shop if you're interested in her or any of the others in the line please check out the Etsy link in the description box below or direct message me on social media or email me at scariosities.com I also have payment plans available. Uh, they'll be considered as well. So 
So now I'm adding the blush and making sure that she's sealed before she gets her blush because I don't want that to blend in with the blue that I've already laid down. That way it would turn into sort of a purple color, which it already kind of does because of the, um, because you're layering pink on top of blue, but it would do that even more so if I didn't seal it first. So I'm adding that blush to the apples of the cheeks, up the uh, high cheekbone line, and then a little bit in her eyebrow area. And doing a little bit more contouring because I know I'm gonna give her another seal. After I did the lips with the uh, layers of pan pastel, I went back and refined that a little bit, gave her some sharper lines with a Derwent watercolor pencil. I usually like to blend everything out with the pan pastel colorless blender. It works really well. I've been asked a couple times how that works and it's one of my favorite things. If you're, it's not for everybody, I think, but it really works for me. So even though this is sped up, you can kind of get an idea of just the constant layering and layering and layering of color, I think. So onto the eyes, I wanted to give them a sort of a, a haunting look, make them very light colored and kind of dead since she is a dead character. Uh, I wanted to mimic the look of the actual character, but I didn't, I wanted to give it my own twist. So it is, I went ahead and gave her the actual full eye with iris and pupil. But again, I want them to be light. So what I'm doing is outlining them with some dark darker blues and then blending them out with a super super light blue pencil adding a yellow highlight as well so there's that light blue pencil it's like the very lightest I think Derwent carries in watercolor Let me know in the question in the comment section if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer them when I can And like I said, the main look of these eyes, I'm giving them just a very, sort of just an outline that tapers off. And then I also added some little line detail to them just to give them some character, I guess. Once I was finished with the eyes, I went and started on the little detail of the jaw where you can see there's like a hole in her cheek and you can see some decaying and her teeth is showing through. Sounds gross, <laughs> but that's a part of the character. And then I also did some detail work on the top of the forehead where it looks like the skin is sort of decaying there as well. So as always, if you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Bye.